Xinjiang, with three majestic mountain ranges circling two basins and countless streams dashing through the snow-caped udulating massif, is like an enormous gorgeous painting unraveling before us as we travel through it. Here, the deserts embrace the mountains, the lakes consort with the grasslands and form a harmonious beauty like no other. Hi, this is Natalie Drewy and this is episode 2 of my Xinjiang exploration. Xinjiang is expansive. Our typical travel routine would be getting up at around 7 a.m., leaving the hotel at around 8 or 8.30 a.m., then after a long day of traveling and sightseeing, checking into another hotel at around 10 p.m. Normally, the towns we stayed at were nothing to write home about. However, this charming Buruchin County really made a deep impression. Buruchin County is under the administration of the Kazakh Autonomous Area of Altai Prefecture. It was an area of over 10,000 square kilometers with a population of 70,000 people. It looks like a Russian town with unique Russian-style rooftops. It is said the white Russians flocked here to escape the October Revolution of 1917 in Russia. The town was built quite basically, yet if you look carefully, you also find that it blends Russian and local characteristics, and that's what it makes it so special. There are many magnificent sceneries in China. Take Yardangs as an example. There are three major Yardangs in China. So far, I've been to two of them. I documented my first Yardan exploration during my Chingan route series. And I can't wait to share my second Yardan adventure with you. So here we go! The ghost town in the desert is situated in Wuerhe, about 100 kilometers from Karamei City, Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, and covers an area of 100,000 square meters. Being one of the few typical wind erosion physiognomies in the world, the ghost city has become a famous tourist area for its unique landform and the howling wind. The ghost town is nicknamed for Fengcheng, the windy town, and it is named as such due to the wind rather than its appearance. Located at the northern edge of the Zhengar Basin, between the Altai and Tianshan Mountains, the ghost town is a noted spot in northern Xinjiang where the wind blows every day. In ancient times, there was no road linking the area to the outside world and there were no inhabitations in the surrounding area. When strong winds or sandstorms occurred, they roared through the town like howling ghosts with sand and dust blocking out the sky. As the sound of the howling wind came closer and closer, it was sometimes shrill, sometimes hoarse and sometimes like the howl of a wolf, which made people's hair stand on end. People could not open their eyes while the yellow sand blasted their faces. When the wind eventually stopped, they felt as if they had escaped from the devil's talons. This is why this area became known as the Ghost Town.
After centuries of erosion by wind and water, the raised stratum of the ghost city has been carved into great mounds with various exotic shapes and an average height of 10 meters. Some mounds look like castles, temples, pavilions and beacons of the city wall, while some resemble lions, horses, turtles and eagles. According to research, a hundred million years ago, the place was a huge freshwater lake. In a warm and humid climate, the land was covered with dense tropical trees and shrubs. After millennia of erosion by wind and rain, the present strange site of Yadang landform was made. It is not only a good place in which to travel, but also attracts a great deal of attention and interest from those who appreciate its scientific value. In case you were wondering where the third Yardang is, it is not so accessible as it lies within a military zone, so it's unlikely I'll be able to go there. However, that doesn't mean the fun will stop here. In fact, I had one of the most adrenaline charged experiences in my life, having a deep ride in the middle of the desert.
nice, spacious, and clean bathroom. A queen size bed and a single bed. It's unusual we get back to the hotel at daytime because the last few days we got to the hotel at nightfall. Now it's 8 p.m. and it's still daytime. Seiram Lake is the largest and highest alpine lake in Xinjiang. It features transparent water of 12 meter depth visibility, changing colors, snow-covered mountains, numerous kinds of wildflowers as well as breathtaking sunrises and sunsets, which together make up some of the most spectacular sights on earth. Visiting Seiram Lake is a feast for the eyes and a truly mind-relaxing experience. Lying in the high mountain basin of Heavenly Mountain, it is also referred to as Sai Li Mu Lake by local people. It has won many other titles like 5A National Scenic Spot, National Historical Site, and Pearl of the Ancient Silk Road. It is blessed with dazzling sapphire lakes, verdant forests, snow-capped peaks, thriving grassland and charming wildflowers in late spring to early autumn. It is said that Seiram Lake was formed by the tears of a couple of Kazakh lovers. In the legend, there was no lake but only grassland with beautiful flowers. A beautiful girl and boy were deeply in love but a greedy devil kidnapped the girl. When the boy came to rescue the girl, he discovered that she had jumped into an abyss. In an enormous sorrow, he jumped into the abyss as well in order to reunite with her. In an instant, billowing water gushed out of the abyss and formed Seiram Lake. Though it is just a fictional love story, it adds mystery to the atmosphere of the lake. Seiram Lake is also a source of other tales involving a lake monster and a wind tunnel in the heart of the lake. On the other side of the lake is Xinjiang's green gem, the grasslands. On the boundless green pasture, all types of flowers sway gently in the breeze. Horses graze peacefully and everywhere you look, there are scenic wonders. The best way to take in the ambience is to ride a horse. And we did exactly that. travel.
just like many other areas in Xinjiang, Seiram Lake belongs to a temperate continental climate with long cold periods, short hot periods, long sunlight hours in the summer, and big temperature gaps during day and night. Seiram Lake is open to tourism all year round, and it offers quite different sceneries in different seasons. No matter whether it is blanketed in snow, covered with multicolored flowers, or decked out in autumn colors, Seiram Lake is a special place to visit. But if you want to enjoy the most comfortable climate, I suggest you to visit Seiram Lake in May to early October. Travelers who want to avoid the crowds may be interested in traveling by car. There are free entry points, including the north, south, and east gates. Private cars can only enter the scenic area via the east or north gate. If you drive to Seiram Lake scenic area, you also need to park your car in the appointed parks. Self-driving may sometimes be forbidden in the event of extreme weather, such as heavy rain, heavy snow, hail, etc., or traffic congestion in the peak season. Today is the last day in Xinjiang, and I am currently at the Sai Li Mu. It's the Switzerland of the Orient. On our way to the hotel, we stopped at a lay-by to get some food and met this very friendly and charming nan bread maker. He showed us how he bakes the bread. The beauty of Xinjiang is a combination of the natural scenery, the rich culture, and the people. That's why Xinjiang remains a top travel destination for many people. And this is the end of my adventures in Xinjiang as well as the northwest of China. Thank you for your company. My next stop is Chengdu. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned. See you in Chengdu.